Welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining Women's Health Queensland wide today for our webinar. I'm Donna, the Health Promotion Officer and to mark Perinatal Depression and Anxiety Awareness Week, which is this week, it runs from the 13th to the 19th of November, we're presenting our webinar on motherhood myths and misconceptions. We have two speakers today, Belinda and Christine. And before I introduce them, just a little housekeeping um, before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box on the right side of your screen and press submit. I'll be monitoring the questions and then at the end of both presentations we'll be able to take questions. Thank you very much for sticking with us with our little bit of a delayed start this morning and I hope you enjoy the presentation. And now I'll introduce uh, our speakers for today. Our first speaker is Belinda Kippen. Belinda is the health education team leader here. She's a registered nurse, a registered midwife, and also has experience in sexual and reproductive health, childbirth education, and health coaching. Over the past two years, she has had a key role in developing and implementing our midwife check-in program a telephone support program that aims to reduce anxiety and depression among pregnant women and new mums. And our second speaker is Christine Baker. Christine is also a registered midwife and a women's health educator with more than 28 years experience in both community and hospital settings in England and Australia. Christine really enjoys opportunities to let pregnant women understand more about their pregnancy and grow and build their relationship with their baby before and after birth. The title of Christine's presentation today is Growing Together. So I hope you enjoy today and now I'll hand over to Belinda. A team of nurses and midwives and health promotion staff here at Women's Health. We see ourselves as specialists in women's health and work to support women to gain confidence to achieve good health. As the title suggests, today we're going to talk about the myths and mysteries of motherhood. So we'll uncover some myths surrounding pregnancy and motherhood, get to the facts and take a look at the reality. We'll also spend a little time looking at some strategies to support women during this sometimes perilous journey to motherhood. So myth, motherhood is natural and intuitive the belief that women have an innate knowledge about how to care for a baby. We are bombarded by images of the all-knowing, the all-beautiful and seemingly intuitive mothers. They're on the TV, they're in the magazines and in social media. You know them, you've seen them, but are they real? The fact is, mothering does not come naturally to all women. Simply because you're a woman doesn't mean you naturally know what to do with a newborn. Instead, it's, it's a demanding job that requires new skills that can take time to acquire. Reality. Women don't become mothers overnight, but evolve into mothers over time. Be reasonable with your expectations, both for yourself and your baby. It takes time to become comfortable in the role of mum. And remember, there's no such thing as the perfect mum, except for possibly on Facebook. <laughs> You will not and do not always have to get it right. There's no right way to do anything. You learn as much from your baby as your baby will learn from you. Together you'll learn what works for both of you and what doesn't. Mothering is a lot about trial and error. If you're committed to being there for your baby, you are doing enough. You are a good enough mother. Expect sleepless nights, lots of crying, that's the baby and at times the feeling of not knowing what you're doing. This is all normal. It's also normal to learn how to cope with these stressful times. Here at Women's Health, we talk a lot to women as part of our midwife check-in program that Donna mentioned at the beginning and I'll, I'll go through at the end of this presentation. And we spend a lot of time encouraging women to trust their intuition. Women, you know, they're really bombarded with advice from friends and family and have access to huge amounts of self-help material. It can be overwhelming and at times women need encouragement to trust themselves. 
They are the experts in their own lives and ultimately they they know the ones, they're the ones that know what's best for them and for their baby. Myth. Life won't be that different with a new baby. This is a great slide, isn't it? The belief that a baby can be easily accommodated into your existing lifestyle and routine. I've heard many couples talk quite proudly about how this baby won't change our lifestyle. The baby's just going to fit in around us. Fact. The responsibility of parenting can be overwhelming, especially the responsibility of caring for someone so small and vulnerable, someone who is totally dependent on you for their welfare. Often life, as you know, it seems to be changed forever. Strategy. Discuss expectations of parenthood with your partner. Many factors can influence a person's ideas about parenthood. Often expectations are different amongst couples. It can be dependent on, on your own experience of parenting. How were you parented as a child? What did you like about your parenting? What would you like to replicate? What didn't you like? What would you do differently? Discussing, discussing expectations with your partner and understanding how you'll manage the changes a new baby brings can reduce disappointment and conflict in the future. From ideas around how you're going to settle your baby, how you're going to feed your baby, ways to, to manage crying, all the way to expectations around managing homework. And I know that that's, that's what's happening in our household at the moment, different expectations of homework strategies. So it's, it's good to communicate with your partner around you know, what, what it is that you, you can work together on. Plan ahead to make life easier. You know, think about some potential stressful changes and we all know that you, are, you will be at some point sleep deprived. So work together at coming up with some possible coping strategies and here's a list of some things that people have done in the past that can assist. Restrict visiting in the first few weeks after birth. Sleep during the day when the baby sleeps. Switch off your phone when you're resting. Accept help from others. I've heard a great great um, idea around post-it notes. Think about all the things that, that may help you at home when you've got a new baby, like cooking a meal, sweeping the kitchen, doing the vacuuming, picking up a, a, a load of groceries or going to the fruit store. Write them on individual post-it notes and, and pop them on the fridge so that if you've got visitors who come over and say, you know, what can I do to help? You can just say, look, grab something off the fridge and, you know, do something that's really going to, to help you so you don't have to come up with the ideas all the time. So that's just one, one thing that I've heard of in my travels that I thought sounded quite good. But most of all, go easy on yourself. No one ever died from eating takeaway or sitting in a room that hasn't been vacuumed for more than a week. Be realistic and set simple goals. Many things can wait. Most of the time it's about giving yourself permission to let go. We are our own worst critic. Myth. Supermum. The belief that women can have it all. Maintain a career, study, raise children and manage the household. All while looking beautiful and always being in control. And we've seen, we see them out there in the media all the time, don't we? Fact. The reality is that a new baby will initially contribute 30 to 40, at hour, 30 to 40 hours a week of extra work to the household. That's about five hours a day. To accommodate this extra workload, changes to everyone's routines will be needed. Juggling motherhood with study, a career or household tasks is not easy and requires more than just good planning. One thing that we can plan on is that babies are very unpredictable. Be flexible about timetables and schedules and accept that you have little control over your time with a newborn. Strategy. Clear understanding on what compromises you are both willing to accept. Reevaluate what can be achieved with a new baby in the house. You may not be able to keep the house as tidy as you like may not be able to have meals cooked from scratch all the time. Your partner may not be able to visit the gym as often. You may not be able to keep the same exercise routine, coffee routine, social routine. 
myth. Babies are always delightful, aren't they? The belief that all babies are cute, happy and feed and sleep normally all the time. Fact. Most babies are delightful. They also cry, some more than others. They vomit, they poo and they certainly keep you up awake at night. Myth. Pregnancy is a wonderful, enjoyable experience. The belief that women all love being pregnant and embrace every change that pregnancy brings. Fact. Some women find the change that pregnancy brings difficult to adjust to and are actually lived with her. As midwives, we learn about the so-called minor disorders of pregnancy and they include reflux, constipation, hemorrhoids, swollen ankles. Not to mention the fact that at one point you'll no longer be able to see your toes when you look down. Rolling over in bed is difficult and having sex becomes quite interesting. Myth. Pregnant women glow. Women look and feel great throughout the pregnancy. Fact. Morning sickness, backaches and tea commonly associated with being pregnant can leave women feeling anything but glowing. Myth. Yummy mummy. The belief that women can regain their pre-pregnancy body within a few months of And this isn't helped by all the celebrities that we see out there who, you know, they seem like they get their pre-pregnancy bodies back very quickly, but, you know, they often have very different lifestyles to us out in sort of um, in the normal community. The fact is, some body changes that occur during pregnancy will remain, for example, stretch marks, and it can take a long time to lose weight gained. For best maternal, neonatal and infant outcomes, the World Health Organisation actually recommends waiting 24 months before trying to become pregnant after a live birth. So consider it, it takes nine months um, for your, your body to actually um, grow into a pregnancy. So it, give yourself a bit of time. Strategy. For, when, for many women, the thought of returning to exercise after having a baby can be stressful and, and intimidating. When you are ready to start gentle exercise, remember that women's bodies undergo major transformations during pregnancy and childbirth. It's important to listen to your body and start out slowly. During the first six weeks after giving birth, the body needs to recover and even light or moderate exercise can be harmful. Launching into a routine that involves high intensity aerobics and lifting heavy weights is not a good idea. Instead, it's recommended to focus on low impact exercise such as brisk walking and swimming and gradually increase the intensity. But it takes time. Keep yourself plenty of time to recover. Be kind to yourself and think about the amazing things that your body has achieved. Another strategy, being active is essential for good health and, good body, and, and is good for our bodies. But eating well is just as important. One of the best ways to stay healthy is to combine physical activity with healthy eating. Having a balanced nutrition, nutritious diet makes it easier to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. It also means that you'll have more energy to look after your baby. And, and you'll have more vitality to do the things that you enjoy. Reality. Breastfeeding does not come easily to all women. Breastfeeding can be very rewarding, convenient, and besides the nutritional benefits to the baby, is a wonderful opportunity for the two of you to bond and connect. It, however, can initially be very challenging Learn about, in pregnancy, learn about what to expect. Gather as much information as you can and consider where you can access support if need be. Myth. Motherhood is the fulfilment of womanhood. The belief that having a baby is women's most important achievement. Fact. Women do not always feel that their life is complete after having a child. Women who had many other interests prior to having a baby may find they miss aspects of their old life, such as the mental challenges of a career or adult company. Strategy. Support your emotional and mental health. So what does it mean to be mentally healthy? 
It means that most of the time you feel good about yourself, good about what you do, and good about others. You enjoy the simple things in life, feel fairly optimistic about the future, and are interested in, in what's going on in the world. And we like to think of it as a, a good way to, to remember about getting um, maintaining your, your uh, good emotional health is to act, belong, commit. And if I just go through that now, act. Keep physically, socially, spiritually and mentally active. Being active helps us cope with stress, builds friendships and lifts our spirits. Belong. Have a sense of belonging helps us build friendships and feels good. It creates opportunities and strengthens communities. Commit. Commit to continuing your activities and set yourself small, manageable goals. Try to set aside some time each day that's just for you. And finally, it's helpful to remember that adjusting to life with a new baby is enormously challenging and it can take time. Having realistic expectations of what pregnancy and motherhood involve can help women better adjust to life with a new baby. I wanted to talk a little bit about the midwife check-in and, and what we can offer to, to all women out there who are pregnant or new mums. So we have a, a program that is available over the telephone and it's to support your emotional health and wellbeing as you're transitioning through pregnancy to being a new parent. So we can actually phone you and support you and just check in on you throughout your pregnancy and after birth once that baby has been born and beyond six weeks when a lot of the other supports tend to drop off. If you're interested, I encourage you to go online and have a look at, at our midwife check-in program and uh, you can register online. You can also phone us and speak to one of the midwives about it. Uh, I think that we're going to leave questions to the end, is that right? Um, so I will hand it over to Christine. Uh, hello everyone and my name is Chris. I'm one of the nurses and midwives working here at the Women's Health Organisation and I actually work on um, the midwife check-in service which Belinda has just been talking to all you lovely ladies about today. So I'm um, more than happy to talk to any of you that might be interested in the future. So please um, follow the links on our website and um, that would be great. So my talk today um, is called Growing Together. Now, pregnancy is a time of significant physical, psychological and social change for women as they negotiate their role as a mother and begin their journey into parenthood. So supporting a mother's emotional well-being during the perinatal period has now been recognised to be as important as the traditional focus on the physical health of the mother and the child. There is increasing evidence about early brain development and the way in which infants develop emotion and their behavioural well-being in the formation of their early relationships. And this has highlighted the particular importance of building a bond with the unborn baby and sensitive early caregiving. Pregnancy is the beginning of a new journey into parenthood and this is the ideal time for mothers to create a lasting relationship with their child which starts in utero. A loving relationship with you is the most important part of your child's environment. So tuning in and responding to your child with warmth and gentleness lays the foundations for your child's development and helps to shape the adult that your child will become. So by building a warm, positive and responsive relationship with your child, you're helping to shape the adult he'll become and giving him a strong foundation for the rest of his life. We need to understand that a woman's experiences throughout the pregnancy can have a positive or negative impact on their growing baby. So we should not underestimate the importance of good emotional and psychological well-being throughout this journey. A number of factors can influence the ability of mothers to be to engage with their developing baby, including, for instance, things like, you know, if the pregnancy was planned, 
um, the mother's memories of her own early relationships, her family traditions, her hopes, her fears and dreams for this pregnancy. So during the antenatal period, pregnant women build up maternal representations or images of their developing fetus and of themselves as a parent. This is particularly apparent between the fourth and the seven months of gestation, when fetal movements can be felt by the pregnant woman. These representations are affected not just by biological changes, but also psychological and social factors, including the environment and also relationships that the mother-to-be is experiencing. We know from research, as well as our own personal and professional experiences, that women begin to form images, hopes, dreams for their unborn child and their expected future life together. These thoughts and feelings grow as their pregnancy advances. And with the introduction of 3D and 4D imaging on ultrasound these days, mothers now have a more remarkable ability to clearly identify with and relate to their growing baby. So the level and the nature of the mother's engagement is indicated by her mental images about her developing baby. Some pregnant women may be reluctant to engage with their baby during pregnancy or just be overwhelmed by negative feelings, especially if this was an unplanned or an unwanted pregnancy. So the bonding that we often talk about in relation to the baby is indicated by these mental images and it's an important foundation for the mother's later relationship with her newborn baby. Research has shown that the richness of these images was significantly linked with the security of the infant's attachment to the parents at the age of one year. We also know that women who had experienced domestic abuse had a significantly more negative representations of their infants as well as themselves and their babies were more likely to be insecurely attached. So bonding. Bonding can be defined as an emotional tie from the parent to the infant. And bonding and attachment are often used interchangeably, but they are different. Mothers bond with their babies, but the baby will form an attachment to the mother or the parent or the caregiver. The process of bonding may be stimulated by the mother feeling her unborn baby move during the second trimester, and fathers can also begin bonding too as they begin to connect with their baby in utero, watching and feeling the baby move and kick as he or she develops. Attachment. So attachment is a deep and enduring emotional bond between the infant and the caregiver and the primary means by which the infant will regulate their stress. Secure attachment. This is infants who are securely attached are able to obtain emotional comfort from the parent when they are distressed and they use the parent as a secure base from which to explore the world around them. So an infant in a secure attachment relationship explores freely in the presence of the caregiver, so the mother, the father, whoever that might be, and they check on him or her periodically, and they restrict their exploration during the absence of that caregiver. So an infant who's securely attached with a caregiver will show varying levels of distress when the caregiver is absent, but they will respond positively when the caregiver returns and the infant will then seek contact with that caregiver when they're distressed and then they'll settle down once the contact is made and comfort is provided. So a caregiver who promotes secure attachment is sensitive to his or her infant signals, is receptive and accepting of their infant's distress and is consistent in applying this positive parenting style. Strong attachments and relationships early in life also mean that your child is more likely to have better physical and mental health and fewer behavioural problems later in life. So how do we encourage mothers-to-be to engage with their baby? So we explore with the mother how she imagines the baby to be. We encourage those positive images of her baby and if a woman expresses extremely negative images or significant disengagement, 
then that would be a good time to refer those, those ladies on to a clinical psychologist for further help and support during the pregnancy. Mindfulness. So mindfulness is um, a mental state which can be achieved by you focusing on your own awareness of the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's own feelings, thoughts and bodily sensations. And one of the most beautiful ways to you know, experience this, particularly at the time of the birth, is that immediate period afterwards where you have that skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby right after you've just become a new parent and a new mother. So in order to you know, use mindfulness as a, a technique in your life, all you need is five minutes, just like this lady in the picture, you know, just find a nice comfortable position to be in, somewhere where your posture is good, you feel comfortable, well supported, you can relax and just close your eyes. And as this lady does as well, just rest her hands on her abdomen and then just allow your sense of touch to engage with your baby and just become really aware of everything around you, like the wind blowing in your face, the sun on your face, the warmth and all those beautiful, you know, sensations that you experience when you're exposed to the nature around you. And that's something that you can do in any environment, be it indoors, be it outdoors, wherever. And whenever you've got those five minutes, it's a good time to just really practice being in the moment with your baby and just engage with your baby. And that can be a very precious time for you both. So during your pregnancy, you will also notice that you, know, you have changes in your relationships. And although we're focusing an awful lot today on uh, the woman and her relationship with her baby, it is important too that you encourage your partner, if you have a partner, to engage with the baby too and they can practice those um, sessions of mindfulness with the baby so that could be something you could even do together you know as a, a couple's time so when we look at research um, we know that from around 20 weeks of pregnancy that the babies begin to respond to sound and louder sounds and these can make the baby startle and move in utero and as the unborn baby matures, they can recognize different voices and the parents' voices will become very familiar to the baby. So practicing different things in your pregnancy can be really useful. You know, when you sit down and watch your favorite TV show or you listen to your favorite piece of music, later on, the newborn baby can recognize that music that they've heard in the womb and they often can respond very positively to that, particularly when they hear those same uh, the TV shows or music that you've played while the baby's been in utero with you. So what are some of the ex activities that you can practice? So you can put on some of your favorite music and notice whether your baby seems to be more active or whether they actually go off to sleep and become more relaxed just like you often are when you're practicing that uh, period of relaxation for yourself and paying attention to your baby. When you feel a kick, put your hand on your stomach and just talk to your baby in nice, calm, reassuring tones and just say, hi, it's mummy here. You know, I love to feel you moving around there. It's great to feel that and it's really comforting for you as a mum. And just try sitting down and relaxing and again, enjoying that moment to just gently rub your bump talk to your baby, talk to your baby and tell your baby what you've been doing today. You could be saying, I've just been to the shops and I bought this little outfit for you, you know, and encourage your partner to do this as well too. It's a good way to get them involved and in interacting with the baby before the birth itself. And encourage that mindful approach, paying particular attention to the movement, the moment, and really feel how your baby moves inside and just close your eyes and try to just visualize the movements. So a few take home messages from today for you. We know from a lot of research that the woman's emotional and psychological well-being can have a positive or a negative effect on the developing relationship with her unborn baby. So it's important to nurture and encourage this race relationship during the pregnancy and this will facilitate the best start and be a good foundation 
for the new baby to form a strong attachment after birth. Remember it's never too early to communicate with your brain baby and exposure to positive experiences throughout the pregnancy and the early postnatal period will lay down the strong foundations for the future. Thank you everyone and hopefully you enjoy this presentation. Thank you very much Belinda and Christine for those very interesting presentations. We've got one question at the moment and that's come in from Nita and she was asking when do you think is the best time to leave the house with a new baby? Do you want to answer that one Christine? Uh, like there's a couple of things to consider there. It's really important to, to get out and about and leave the house I think you know when you can feel up to it physically and it's good for your uh, physical health and emotional health to, to, to get out of your home environment. There's also considerations around the baby and, and vaccinations is that right Christine what would you comment about vaccinations in the first six weeks of getting out into the community? Yes, I mean, it's it's getting that balance like with everything in your life, I think, really. You know, the the exposure for yourself and the fresh air and the exposure to the sunshine is really quite important. And sometimes, you know, you can get out of the house with somebody else looking after your baby so you meet that need for yourself as an individual. With your baby, um, certainly if you're not going out in big crowds or anything like that, then if you're just going to go for a walk in the local area, then there's no reason why you can't do that, irrespective of the vaccination time of things. Certainly one of the things you do need to be a little bit aware about is um, you know, the risk of whooping cough, and that's something that we talk about a lot in pregnancy these days now, and in actual fact, um, women are actually offered and recommended the whooping cough vaccination in the third trimester of their pregnancy now. And that's an, another thing that's really good to probably encourage any adult who's likely to be in contact with the baby to seriously consider having that booster for themselves. If they're going to be in contact with your baby for any significant period of time, then that's going to minimise the potential risk to your baby and you know reduce that risk of your baby contracting the whooping cough until your baby will grows and matures and um, builds that immunity for his or herself. So certainly, you know, it's it's probably not the best idea to go into the big shopping centres, and particularly at this time of year now, we've got Christmas coming up and all the Christmas shopping that's going to be happening. So when you think about that, it's probably best to keep that to an absolute minimum, or alternatively, do that shopping as a bit of free time for you with somebody else looking after your baby at home. But certainly, you know, that exposure for the baby to the environment and to nature and to the fresh air and to the sunshine is really, mm. really good. You know, so going to a local park that's perhaps not so crowded in the time of day when there's less people around might be the best way to, to get those initial exposures to the daylight and the sunlight. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for both for that answer. Um, just a reminder that if you are wanting to ask a question, that you just type your questions into the box on the right side of your page. We seem to have covered off on the questions at the moment. so. I was just going to thank you all for joining us and also just to remind you that Women's Health Queensland wide have a range of resources and health information and programs to support women and give them health information right throughout their lifespan. We have a free lending library of books that you're welcome to borrow. We post them out to you and post and send them back. And um, we also have a lot of information on looking after yourself when you're a new mum and I think we've just had another question come in so I'll just have a look at the question and I'll put it to Belinda and Christine thank you very much for your questions and oh this is a good one um, how can you best manage lots of conflicting advice from family and friends. <laughs> Over to you, ladies. <laughs> you want to answer that one, Chris? It's a tricky um, one, isn't it? And it's one that I think has been around for a long time with all mums. Um, during pregnancy, you even get advice from shopkeepers, don't you, when you're pregnant, telling you, you know, what you should or shouldn't do or should, should or shouldn't eat. Mm. Big problem. Yeah. 
I think it's very interesting in pregnancy and when you're a new mum that there's um, everyone seems to have their two pennies worth of what their best advice is going to be to you and I think the, the important thing is to know that it's going to happen so be prepared for it and be aware of it and one of the one of the things I found that has often been quite useful is to listen to what people have to say you know absorb it take it in reflect on it but at the end of the day you're going to make the decisions that are right for you and I think as something that Belinda mentioned earlier in her talk she says you know yourself and you know your family and you know your baby better than anybody else so you're that best person who's best placed to make those really informed choices and decisions about what you think will work for you so you know take, take on board listen to the advice but at the end of the day you'll pick out what's right for you what works for you and at the end of the day what works for you is the, is what's best for you and it's also sometimes it's it's handy to be able to just say thank you to people yeah thanks Absolutely. for that and i haven't thought of that before or you know i'll think about that and and mm -hmm. don't feel like people are trying to tell you what to do they're just they mean well um try not to take it personally and and um mm and feel like they're criticizing you but it's sort of take it on board and say thank you and, and think about it and use it as it suits you mm -hmm. yes. and I think that's the best advice yeah. it really is Belinda because some things that people will tell you will be great and you'll be thinking never thought about that try it it works it's brilliant and other things will have the opposite effect mm. and um, I think the hardest bit is when it probably comes from maybe close family members who Often you might perceive it as, as them being maybe a little bit critical of your yes. mothering abilities yeah. or your mothering skills. And what you've got to remember is that, you know, what they did in their day was probably the right thing to be done in their day. You know, there's a lot more research, uh, a lot more knowledge going on out in our day now. And sometimes it can be useful to just, you know, if, particularly if you've got a close family member, and, and let's pick a topic, say breastfeeding, that's a real good one that you get conflicting advice on all the time. Um, and, you know, people will say, well, you know, in my day, this is what we did. There are sites out there that are available that will show you what the latest research findings are. And sometimes it might be worth saying, oh, you know, that's really interesting what you tell me today. I've been looking at some information and, you know, mm. would you like to look at it with me and share your information with them? Because then that actually will educate them and that will bring them up to speed and bring them up to date. And it might actually change their perception of the advice that they were offering. So it can work both ways. And there's, and also remember too that what you do today may not work, but you might try it down the mm. track and it, and it might be something that works. So always be open to, to doing things differently and yeah. to new ideas. As I said before, there's no there's no right way or wrong way or one way of doing things that you, know, you can actually try different things at different times. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And we've had Paula has asked a question too, just about whether our services are available in remote areas of Queensland. And they are, Paula. We're a statewide organisation. Um, so we have the midwife check-in service, as we were discussing, and that's just people can go online to register. All we need is a first name and a mobile number, and the midwives will call the lady back. We don't take the place of their primary caregiver, of their doctor and their allied health staff where they live, but we're additional support. And as Belinda said, we can talk about a wide range of things, so not just bub, but how uh, the new mum is coping, how the pregnancy is going. It's a confidential service, it's anonymous, and it's free. So that's for anyone in Queensland, and they just can call us on the 1800 number and uh, we are located in Queensland but we cover the state. We are working in with Playgroup Queensland at the moment and with other organisations and we're always very happy to look at collaborating with others. Um, we have a range of fact sheets on different things to do with uh, perinatal health and preconception health as well. On our website we're uh, started to make some videos about uh, different topics that are available for people to look at and watch and just from you. So there aren't any other questions. So thank you very much and thank you to our presenters today for joining us. Uh, and we'll leave it there.